Hey, what's up? It's Jared with State of Tech, and today we are going to update our iOS device to iOS 13. Now, I do this video every year because I have a backup plan that I think is very important, and it's also sometimes kind of tricky to get that software update. You know, Apple does push the update a lot of the times, and you may get a notification on your phone asking you to update to the newest version, but usually that doesn't happen right away, and so you might be wondering why you're not getting the latest features features, Apple Arcade, and all of that exciting stuff. Now, not every iPhone is going to get iOS 13, and not every iPad is going to get iPad OS 13. So there is a list of supported devices, and Apple does a good job of supporting even uh, devices that are several years old. And so I've got a video that showcases all of the devices, and I talk a little bit about that. So I'll make sure to link to that uh, in the card and down below. But we're going to go through the process that I typically go through so that we have everything backed up and we know that things are safe. Anytime that you do a software update on your phone, there's always the potential for something to go wrong. And so we want to make sure that that doesn't happen. So we're going to go through this process together. I encourage that you do that on your device before you push that button to update the software. So you can make sure that all your photos and videos are backed up, all of your data is backed up, and you don't have to worry about it. So the first thing that I do is download and install Google Photos, which I already have installed. If you don't have Google Photos on your phone, you're missing out because Google gives unlimited backup for your photos and your videos. Now, Google does this because they uh, love to have data and access to our data, but the software that they use is pretty cool. The way that they've put it out gives a lot of value to me because I can access my photos regardless regardless of whatever device that I'm on. So whether I'm on my iPhone, I'm on an iPad, I'm on a Mac or a PC, or maybe I'm on some other computer and I want access to all of my photos, I can just log in to my Google account and get access to all of my photos and videos. Now, Apple has a backup service and everything, but it's kind of, it gets expensive if you have a lot of photos and videos. Google offers unlimited photo backup at high resolution, uh, and it's not full resolution, so it does a little bit of compression on your images, but I've had to take an image that was uploaded to Google Photos and print it, and it's still great quality. There's no loss there at all that I could really tell. So using the Google Photos app to back up your photos is pretty simple. You simply go into the App Store and install it. So I'm going to do a search for the App Store. And then we'll go and tap on search and type in Google Photos. And of course, it's already installed on this device, but at this point, you would install it and you would sign in with your Gmail account or your Google account. Anytime that you access a Google service, you're, you're needing to log in for something and you either have a Gmail account with Google or you logged in using your existing email account. If you've never done this before, you could just simply log in, create an account on Google Photos, use your existing email. You don't have to have a Gmail account or anything like that use your existing email account, and then open up the Google Photos app. Now, there's going to be some settings that it's going to ask you about initially, and so I'm going to show you those settings here on the screen. When we go to Backup and Sync, we have the ability to set the upload size to high quality, which is free unlimited storage, or you can set it to original. Now, if you set it to original, it's gonna back up the original images and video, but it's gonna use the data that it has given you, which is a very small amount of data. If you have a Gmail account, you get a little bit of data for Google Drive and Google Photos backup, or you need to subscribe to a Google One subscription plan, which gives you additional data. I don't really think this is necessary, so just leave it set to that. You can see here it's advertising by another 100 gigs of storage for $2 a month. So choose when to back up. Now using cellular data to back up your photos and videos means that it's gonna use your data plan to back up. Now my wife, whose phone I'm backing up right now, has those toggled on. I think I'm gonna to toggle them off because I would rather it use Wi-Fi data so when I'm at home, when she's at home, connected to Wi-Fi, we're gonna go ahead and just allow that to update in the background and it will do that. So with that set up, 
Um, you can see all the photos that are here. There's a little icon here that shows the little cloud with a check mark showing that all of our photos and videos were backed up. When you do this for the first time, it's probably going to take a little while to back up all of your photos and videos to the cloud because that hasn't happened yet. Or maybe if you have this app and you haven't opened it in a while, it's going to need to play catch up and do some backup. So you can tap here to see that backup is complete. And you can see that it says free up space. There's on this phone 2,995 items to delete from this device. This is another way to free up storage on your phone. So for example, if you go and buy a new phone or maybe you have a phone that doesn't have enough storage, you're always running out of storage for your photos and videos. Choosing that free up space option is really good because it's going to delete everything off of your phone locally and it's going to leave everything up in the cloud. It's going to check to make sure that it doesn't delete anything that it hasn't backed up. It's going to back up everything and then it will free up all the space on your phone. And as you can see, my wife's phone here has almost 3,000 items that could be deleted. Now, thankfully, I bought her a phone with a little bit more storage, so she's not running low on storage. But if you are constantly running out of storage on your phone, this is also a great way to regain a lot of that storage so that you can continue to take new photos and all of that good stuff. So after the process of backup is complete, you know that all of your photos and videos are safe uh, in Google Photos. So that's great. The next step is going to be to go into settings and actually do an iCloud backup. So I'm just going to swipe down on the screen and type in settings or go to your settings app. And then if you're on iOS, I think 11 or 12, there's a bar at the top that shows your name with your iCloud account and information. And you could even just pull down just a little bit to get to the search box and type in backup. Now, if you don't have this, you're going to need to scroll down to iCloud. And as soon as you get down to iCloud, you can uh, tap there and then access that. But since I'm on iOS uh, 11 or 12, this actually is on 12, I'm going to tap on my wife's name, I'm going to tap on iCloud, and then I'm going to scroll down to iCloud Backup. And it's going to show me here that my iCloud Backup is enabled and that I could back up now, and it shows me when my last successful backup is. Now, if you've never backed up your phone to iCloud before, this process may take a little while. And typically, if you do have it enabled, your phone is backing up to iCloud every night when you are sleeping, when it's plugged into the charger, or on a wireless charger if you have a phone that supports it, iCloud should be backing up automatically. But we want a fresh backup that's going to include everything to the most recent call history, most recent text messages, and all of that stuff. So I'm going to tap the backup button right now. So after the process is complete, we are able to actually go in and now run that update. Now keep in mind that these updates are as good as they could possibly be. iCloud does a really good job. So when, when you have to either move to a new phone or if there were problems and you had to restore your phone from a, a cloud backup, your phone is going to look and feel exactly like it did. It's going to put all the apps back where they were. It's going to put as much of the data into the app so that your apps are where they were when you left off with the exception of some apps that maybe have privacy related things or whatnot. Like your banking app is going to require you to log in again and stuff like that. But a game that you played or your to-do list and stuff like that is all going to continue to be backed up. Now, while this is happening, we also want to look on that iCloud screen to make sure that all of the items that we want backed up are toggled on. You can see a lot of green toggles here that are uh, checked, and those are all checked because those are items that we want backed up. You can notice up at the top, though, for whatever reason, Messages is not backed up. I need to go ahead and enable that. I don't know why Messages was not enabled to be backed up. My wife probably wants her text messages to be backed up, so I'm going to make sure that's enabled. Mail doesn't need to be backed up for this particular device because she's actually pulling in her email from Gmail, which backs everything up, so no need to back that up here. And we're also not utilizing iCloud for saving photos and backing up photos. So I have that turned off because she has the free iCloud backup plan on her phone. If we were to enable photo backup, it would use up all of that. And we'd probably need to purchase an iCloud backup account from Apple. And I don't really want to do that. Uh, we don't need that because we have Google Photos and Google Photos does it for free. All right. 
So now we're in the settings app still. We're gonna go down to general. We're gonna go to software update and it's gonna say, hey, there's a software update, iOS 13. Now, if you don't see this, you might be on an older phone and you're gonna to need to check out that video where I talk about which phones and devices get iOS 13. I'm gonna go ahead and tap on that and it's gonna start the download process after I click agree and agree again to the terms of services. Now for this particular phone, it's a two gigabyte download, so it's gonna take a little bit of time. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you are uh, connected to a good Wi-Fi connection because the download process is gonna take a little while. Once the download process is complete, I'm gonna tap on the install button and then it's gonna go through the install process. I actually can't show you what is on the screen during that because the screen recording is gonna shut off, but the process will be uh, that the update will run, the phone will power itself on and off a couple of times, and then as soon as that is done, we'll jump right back in and finish up the process together. All right, so the process is complete, and I actually ran into a little hiccup along the way. Uh, the install wouldn't actually go. It would fail in the download process, and it turned out that my wife's phone didn't have enough memory left on it in order to complete the download and the install. As I mentioned before, it was just over a two gigabyte download, and it was gonna require probably a little more than that to complete the install. And then, of course, that downloaded file will go away, and it will clean itself up afterwards, but I actually had to go and use the free up space option on the phone in order to get it to have enough storage space. So the phone has completely restarted. Um, it might be a little hard to see here, but it says software update, swipe up to finish setting up iOS. And so I need to swipe up and then enter in the passcode because Face ID uh, is always disabled when you restart your phone. So there we go, and it says update completed. I know it's a little bright. I'm gonna tap on continue. And when I tap on continue, it'll ask me if I wanna set up Apple Pay. I'm gonna tap uh, set up later in wallet. And then I'm presented with the bright or the light or dark mode. I preferably like the dark mode. You can definitely uh, hear about that in other videos that I've been putting out, but we can choose dark mode or light mode. So I'll go ahead and choose dark mode, hit continue. It says, welcome to your iPhone, swipe up to get started. And boom, we are there ready to go. And we are with iOS 13 now set up and our phone is good to go. So at this point, I usually don't run another backup for a little while. I wanna make sure that my phone is operating well, that apps are working the way that they're supposed to and that nothing weird happened. You know, like I said earlier, when you plug in your phone and set it down, it will want to run a backup, an iCloud backup. So I just wanna take a few minutes now to actually look around the phone and make sure everything is fine. A lot of apps are gonna have new messages, like the Photos app says what's new in Photos. Uh, so it's gonna give me kind of a little bit of a walkthrough if, as to what's new in Photos. And a lot of other apps are going to do that as well. Another thing that you might wanna do now is actually go into the App Store and see if there are any apps that have software updates that are available to run. So what's new in App Store, click on Continue. Uh, then we need to click on our little icon up here and then scroll down and all of our automatic updates are there. I'll click on update all because there are apps that are gonna be updated now for iOS 13 and you might be a little confused if you jump into one of your apps and it isn't working properly. That's because you're now in iOS 13 and the app hasn't been updated yet. So run those updates. There were like 15 updates here on my wife's phone that needed to be ran. When I updated my phone, there were like 30 some odd updates that needed to be ran just from having installed iOS 13. So that's something that you're going to want to do. Now, after that, you might wanna take advantage of Apple Arcade. It comes with one month free. Apple Arcade has been a lot of fun. Uh, I have my video talking about my top five Apple Arcade apps that I've enjoyed playing since Apple Arcade came out. So make sure to subscribe to the channel here so you can see uh, that video as soon as I get done editing it. I'll be putting it out there for all of you. So that's gonna do it for this video. Um, obviously, iOS 13 is new. There's lots of really neat new features in there. It 
it made my phone feel kind of new again before I jumped over and started playing with an iPhone 11. My iPhone 10s definitely felt like a new phone with iOS 13 with the dark mode and changing some of the other things and then uh, Apple Arcade with some new games. There was a lot of new stuff that just made it feel like a lot of fun and so I wanted to make sure that when you do your update that you do it in the safest way possible so that you have everything backed up and you don't lose anything because nothing's more frustrating than that. So if this video helped you out, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel here on State of Tech so you can be notified when we put out new videos. But until next time, take care and I hope to see you back in the next video. Bye.